Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Namaste Village and the Namaste Experience. It is a very quiet morning here at Namaste Village, very contemplative. We call ourselves a contemplative interfaith community, which means that we are focused within and we allow whatever expression of the divine to come through in and through that silence. And this is a beautiful day to experience that. And I hope all of you in Zoom land are finding some time, even if it's a short while, to take and to tune within to that ultimate truth of who you are, who you've always been, who you could never stop radiating. In fact, that leads us to our lesson today. I'll, I'll begin by saying I, I, I was watching something on YouTube yesterday afternoon at my home. And as I was watching this lesson that I'll tell you about in a moment, a mosquito was buzzing around me. And I was feeling rather murderous in that moment. I was frustrated because I'm, I'm trying to, to, to hear this beautiful teaching that is coming from Ramana Maharishi. And this mosquito is, is buzzing around. It'll disappear, then, then it's back, then it disappears before I can get him. And I'm determined that I have to kill this mosquito. And in that moment, as I'm thinking this, it was like a light went off inside me. Not actually light went on inside me. And in that holy instant, something changed, something happened. And I know that you all know what I'm saying because this is the holy instant of release from all of those perceptual chains that seem to bind us and hold us in place. And we have these holy instants of release to remind us of what's really happening, who and where we really are. And as I went deeper into this, this lesson that I was receiving from Ramana Maharishi, it all made perfect sense. So I want to share this with you because it really had such a, a deep impact. And I, I actually, I wanted us to, to say at the beginning that uh, the, the title of this is Abandon All Hope of Getting Out of This Alive. Abandon All Hope. I know there's a part of us that, that in the back of our mind entertains the possibility, maybe we'll get out of this alive. You won't. We were talking a couple of days ago about the great teacher who told everyone the message that he received from God. Hold on, someone got unmuted. Okay. That we might not make it. We might not make it. And we said in that lesson that the truth is you made it a very long time ago. And then Calico turned that right upside down to something that is equally true, which is you're right. You're not going to make it. You're not going to make it out of here alive. Because the truth of you is not even really here. It's just the idea, the concept, the identity that you claim. That's what is not going to make it out alive. And so this lesson from Ramana, I think, speaks to this so beautifully. He says, there is neither creation nor destruction, neither destiny nor free will, neither path nor achievement. This is the final and ultimate truth. Apparently, before Romana left this plane, he wanted to give that final lesson, the final ultimate truth. Everything he had ever taught and shared before this led to this holy instant, to these words. And apparently, when he expressed them, many of his disciples said, that's too much. That can't be the ultimate truth. We're leaving. 
and many of them got up and left. Because this ultimate truth was so uncompromising, was so focused on the single reality of you with a capital Y and who you really are. So let me read it one more time. And, and as you hear these words, take them in and, and see where you really are with them. Are you ready to fully embrace this? Are you ready to take this as the ultimate truth in your life? Here it is. There is neither creation nor destruction, neither destiny nor free will, neither path nor achievement. This is the final and ultimate truth. In other words, any idea that you still have left in your mind that there's something that you need to do or to accomplish or to find or to achieve, none of those things ultimately mean anything. In fact, all of those things are really delay tactics. Delaying your full experience of that which has already been achieved, already been accomplished. And we've come to the point where there's no, there's no reason left. There's, there's nothing left for us. The fact that you're here, the fact that you're hearing this means that you're ready for this final and ultimate truth. You may still resist it. There may still and probably will still be a part of you that pushes it away. But it doesn't change the fact that you're ready. You've heard me say before, almost 30 years ago now, when I was with the Emissaries of Life in the mountains of Bosnia, they had only one message, really. There were lots of sub-messages, but really, the only thing that they told me to do, they told me to say, was to go out and tell people, you're ready. You're ready for this. You're ready for this ultimate truth. You're ready to activate it, to live from this place of realizing that there is nothing for you to achieve. There's neither creation nor destruction, neither destiny nor free will. There's no path. There's no achievement. There's only now. So I decided already, some of you know this, that we're going to be painting a couple of messages so that we see them every day. Maybe this will be one of them. I do know that um, one of the very short messages that I'm going to be uh, having painted somewhere, we're still looking at possibilities. This was a lesson that came through in our Enlightenment Partner Program, which I'll tell you about more in a moment. And the, the message is simple. Only love, only God, only now. That's it. Only love. Only God, only now. It, we, we have come to the point where we, we are a single laser focus on reality. I remember two days ago sharing that if you come to a place or to a teacher or a teaching where that laser focus is so pointed, hold still within that. Notice the urge that you may likely feel to wander away because there is a part of each one of us, just like Ramana's disciples who walked away when they heard this ultimate truth. There is a part of each one of us, very subtle, that is going to say something like, I already know that. What else do you got? What else can you teach me? That's it. There's nothing else you need to be taught. Only love, only God, only now. There has to be something more. No. If you get that and, and you hold that laser focus and you resist that urge to walk away wanting more, an experience will strike you down. Literally strike the you that you thought you were down, it will dissolve. And what will be revealed is the truth that has 
forever been true, the reality that is forever real, you, the truth of you. Now, in the on the Hindu path and that which Ramana was teaching, there's a thing called, I think I'm saying this right, the Avanhuta Gita. Is that right? Do you know that? No, no. Advanhuta Gita. Okay. And this is essentially where Ramana was, this is what he was expressing. Just a few lines from this beautiful Gita. I have no birth, no death, and no duties. I've never done anything, neither good nor bad. I am purely Brahman. Beyond all qualities, how could either bondage or liberation exist for me? Once again, this is an expression of that ultimate truth. That last final lesson that Ramana wanted to share before he left this earthly plane. Now you'll notice that that from the Advanhuka, I can't say it, Advanhuta Gita, that it is the voice is coming from the whole perspective of I am consciousness. The whole perspective of I am consciousness. Let me read it one more time and you'll notice that. I have no birth. This is not a person talking. I have no birth, no death, and no duties. This is the I am within you speaking. I've never done anything, neither good nor bad. I am purely Brahman, or I am totally God. Beyond all qualities, how could either bondage or liberation exist for me? It's, it's only the jiva, or the identity, that claims to be able to do anything, the identity. But if the identity is nothing more than a collection of thoughts and a collection of ideas and concepts, what I call thought bricks, you've heard me talk about this before, how we, we make all these decisions about what I like, what I don't like, who I like, who I don't like. And, and we build the, these walls around us out of these thought bricks, thinking that everything inside that wall is who I am. And we forget that that wall is constructed of nothing but thoughts and ideas and concepts, none of which have any reality outside my mind. That's the jiva. That's the identity. That is that which claims to have an identity, to have something to do, something to be, something to share. But we've come to the point now where we can simply rest in the knowledge and the recognition that there's nothing left. And when you hear that, are you willing just to smile or run? Running's fine. I promise you that you're only going to run in a circle and you're going to be right back here very quickly. So you may as well just hold still and accept it now. Go through the spin cycle and come out dry. No, no use being soggy anymore and all wet, thinking there's something else to do, so another place to be. Why don't we hear what Ramana said one more time? There is neither creation nor destruction, neither destiny nor free will, neither path nor achievements. This is the final and ultimate truth. Only love, only God, only now. Oh, Vicky, you can take it from there. Oh, Brother James, I have a few, few thoughts just singing in my heart about all of that. Y you know, at this point in application, 
we're really at the place of there is no world. The world I see is not reality. It is of my own making and does not exist. That's from The Course in Miracles. What is being said in the Advaita Gita is the same thing. There's no place, no path, no nothing that we look at with perception. But the synchronicity that just stirred my heart in this room now, I don't know if she's here, Mary Ann, that um, many of you know, in 1988, her inner voice, she was then also a student of the course, but her inner voice dictated a whole translation and understanding in her Western mind of what the Advaita Gita was teaching. And for the last couple of years, those of us that are interested, Linda does here, um, Virginia, Brenda, we meet once a week and she goes over the Advaita Gita and the inner voice translation. And all of you are welcome. It's on Tuesdays at four o'clock. But the synchronicity of that, and James, that you brought it up today, just fills my heart with holy love and holy oneness and holy fun. How wondrous that that's been part of my practice at least for two years, maybe more. And, and the Advaita Gita is particularly simple and clear, just like your quote, James, only love, only God, only now. It's that it's exquisitely simple and it's wondrous to be in this spot and more and more come into the recognition that really there is no world. It's been perception based on judgment. None of it was so. And all we have to do. So for me, the application of that only love, only God, only now is so what? So no matter what happens, it's back to whatever. <laughs> so what? Or Lana, who's here sometimes, Lana says it so beautifully. She says, oh, sweetie, just pay it no mind. <laughs> She's from a little bit of the South to a Boston, well, a New Jersey girl now. Pay it no mind. Pay it no mind rings in my mind when things come up. And things come up every day. Things come up about health, about um, finance about all kinds of things. And oh, I'm so grateful, so grateful to remember, oh, pay it no mind. That doesn't mean not to look at it as a mirror of a misthought and a judgment I might still be holding. But it doesn't mean I go on an excavation. It means, okay, I'm alerted to a belief that the world is real in this particular form and I'm holding on to it. I'm depending on it. I'm using it, just like you said, as a detour. What did you call it? Um, it as a time delay, is a detour. What did you call it, James? You said hmm? it's a, um, it's what? a, <laughs> that's all right. Oh, anyway, yeah. It's a delay tactic. It's a delay tactic. Thank you. That's a quick way of saying it. So if I'm sick, or if there's an up, if my anyone I, I love or any of us here is sick, to be concerned about the body is a delay tactic. That's the perfect experience, the, the perfect way to see it. Not that we don't want to help one another recognize the truth and be compassionate. We do want to be compassionate because in this realm of time and space, there are experiences of hurt and pain and sadness. But the better help, if we're here to be truly helpful, is to recognize, and we may not say this, that the experience of pain is our experience of resisting the fact that we're not here and we want to be here still. There's some place in us that's still clinging to this as a reality that somewhere we're still desiring. And the pain is the opportunity to let that come up and Pay it no mind. It will not delay me from love only now. God only now. Now am I in holiness. Now am I awake. Now I'm awake to love. And let everything be and see that in one another. That's a way of saying vision, Christ's vision. Seeing our reality as souls and light. 
and not identifying my brother or myself as the body, identifying one another as the light. That is the quickening that lets the resistance that is causing the upset, the pain, the war, the everything else to continue. That's why the power of each one of us, wherever we are, is tremendous. It's grand. Like James was saying yesterday, this is not grandiosity. This is what's truly grand, that any one of us come into fuller and fuller realization that we are the light of the world, that we are love. We belong to love. We belong to our source, our creator. And that is right now. And as we do that and we let go of the idea that this world has a reality, even though we step forward every day with bodies, we step forward with the, with the peace, that peace that passes all understanding that we belong to spirit. We belong to love and let it all go. Pay it no mind. Pay all our mind to the love that we are to the love of God, to the love that's singing to us through all of creation. Listen to it. Listen. Instead of, you know, for many years, I did, and many of us, this process of really looking at the blocks to love's awareness and forgiveness. Hopefully, we've come to a place to recognize without using any delay tactic that any block simply isn't so. And that when we return our attention to what is so, it dissolves, it dies of neglect, it falls away, literally dissolves because there's nothing sustaining it. So love now, only love, only God, only now, that's perfect. It's perfect. And the Advait Gita identifying us as that eternal being and how that I love reading the experiences in every language, in every culture, in every tradition that come to the same point. Simply, there is no world. We live in love. We are spirit. We belong to love. It's what Jesus said thousands of years ago. My kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is love. My kingdom is here now. If we put all our attention, all our desire on it and pay no attention to the rest, the, re the, the recovery of our souls is the only thing that's happening. And it's happening by our opening and awakening to it, paying attention to it, letting it be what it is, listening for it, listening and looking for the wonders and the wildfire of love that's happening all around us, but we could not see before. But today we look for it, we see it, we experience it, and we recognize we're one in it. So, okay, Brother James, that's my two bits. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. <laughs> I love you all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Vicki. That was at least three or four bits. Thank you so much. And I know that for each one of you, all of us, when we hear this, there is a stir. There is something that begins to move. When you hear a simple message that was expressed by Ramana Maharishi, there's something within that says, yes, I feel this reality. I, I feel and know this truth. Pay attention to that. Especially those of us who are spending our day in silence. Pay attention to that. That stir, that's the Holy Spirit speaking to you, reminding you how simple this is. I shared that, that very simple teaching, only love, only God, only now, comes from this 90-day program that I've been offering called the Enlightenment Partner Program. And we are going to be starting a, another group at the beginning of January. Basically, I only take four people for each class, and we have a private conversation, just the two of us, five days a week. There are 90 lessons that take this deeper and deeper and deeper. There's no way to avoid the transformation if you hold still for 90 days and just allow this wave to just wash you clean. 
So I just want to tell everybody out there that if you want to get more information, and if you're interested in being one of those four that start in January, just go to i-am-awake.com. i-am-awake.com. All the information you'll need is there. So we say together now, amen, 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 e punto. Thank you, everyone. Have a beautiful day. Thank you Thank all. You. I will not be here likely 